uh, eastern section on Main Street from the property line. Is it 10 feet now? I was Which, uh, this one right now. Yeah, I was looking at what yeah, was to said. The, to the north side of the sidewalk, it's 10 feet. That way. Yeah. The and then there's a width of the sidewalk, and then there's a green strip, and then there's this green strip. And then the uh, western wing is how far from the sidewalk? The western wing from the is north face of the feet? sidewalk is 20 feet. 20 feet. Okay. It's 10 and 20. So it's 10 feet from the sidewalk to the sidewalk. Oh, yeah, we were responding. Uh, right, we, yes. we've changed. Right. Well, probably we'll see some of the changes, but and, we've, and we've done about six different. No, uh, perhaps at our last meeting, you broke that dam. You right. said, hey, maybe right. we shouldn't put in 14 cars. Maybe right. we can, and that gave us a lot more. Yeah, freedom. that's what I thought. Right. I don't know whether the other boards will buy it, but that's yeah. the risk we're all taking. Yeah, yeah, good. So how much, what is the park in the Where it's eight or nine. Eight or nine, eight or nine now. So that enabled you to move more to the east, move the to just reconfigure. Move, enabled us to move back here. Move I us see. back. I see. Right. Because last time the eastern wings had moved back to five feet. Yes. So they're yeah, yeah. ten feet. Right. Yes. It's been moved. Yeah. Before it was double loaded. Right. You know, there's, it was double loaded parking yes. with an eighteen foot drive in between. Yes. So now it's so, just single loaded. Yes. Some so perpendicular and some parallel. Here? That's the entrance for Yes. Yeah. And, and you've got that little thing to kind of show it. Yeah. You have that backside, so you're across from each other. You, you, we have a drawing. You would be impressed with when we get it, when we really design it. Right. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll make a right, recessed right. entry. To, but, yeah. just, this is the concept. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Just up here. And actually, it's not just to tell you where the entrance is. It's to keep the snow from falling on you when you walk in. Right. And the highest peak now is on Great Street. The highest peak yeah, is. Uh, that is the studio. That's uh, 22 feet. Mm -hmm. And in and front of it, it on Main Street. Down, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yes, uh, the park on Main Street. How that is, is that? Uh, 20 feet. I see. Okay. And then the center entry is 18, 17 feet plus. So. So we're up in the 30s before. Yeah, yeah, we, were, we started at 32. Yeah. So now we're down to 22 with the studio park. Is there a way to get to the tree line that separates the Hills House from the Gray Street properties um, to get onto Main Street? Because uh, I would like to see how the westerly edge aligns with the tree line. So looking from, from Main Street? This yes, way. that's right. Yeah, yes. This, is this, so. yes, this is very helpful. Now I'd like you to, what I'd like you to do is to position yourself on Main Street, looking up at the Hills House, keeping the uh, tree line in the center of your vision. I think I have you looking more from. Okay. This is a little bit further to the right than I think you're asking for. So let's put these are kind of like camera tripods. Yes. <laughs> so what we're doing now, is there still a, um, a drainage mound, or is that, what's the, what's that mound like? We love that question. We <laughs> control the <laughs> drainage. Well, I, after the trip. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I don't know if you can handle it. Get the mound into that somehow? Yes. So <laughs> well, from the picture, it looked like the mound the was now in front of the structure, all the way to this the is east. With, this is where the mound added. So this uh, the mound's already okay. added. So, so where is the mound, actually? Are you telling us we can no longer it's, see the mound? I want to be on record as saying that you wouldn't be able to tell. And I am still on record as saying you can't tell. Well, that is. Yeah. It's this much. We plow that much every year in my farm. So is it a foot high, um, eight inches, or do you have it's a, a foot, foot, foot higher? One foot. One foot. So it's really almost. Eight inches. Wow. 
Yeah. Crane does have an edge view of just the open site that shows the shadow, uh, shadow line between the right. It indicates that that oh, well, here on the side. Uh, you can see. Okay, that gives us a point. That, that's the, uh, the, the mount. And you can see kind of like the mount a little bit. Good. See when it gets turned okay. off versus when it's. You can actually just start on Main Street and just go around the whole building and build. You explain what we're seeing, like you know the south facade going around the corner and all the way around. Just so you know, if you just do a flyover, we can see the whole thing. And, uh, Unless you you set up. Um, this is right in the corner, so this is on the corner of Great Street, kind of looking north towards Hill House. Yeah. We're, looking, we're looking up Gray Street, and there's the new building, and that's the existing. Structure that was moved there. But, so on this end on Gray Street, before you had a porch, you know, like a, a porch and an entry, is that something that's still considered? I mean, it's hard with the massing model, but is that you're going to have an entry? Are you going to solve an entry there? We'll tell when we do the drawings. We don't know yet. I mean, we literally have, we know we can fit it in and all in here, but that kind of a concept of expression is is it is something we will be working on in this next phase if, if, we're, if it's approved for us to proceed. So this is so generally speaking, the answer to Nate's question is no at the moment, just looking at the floor plans. It's, it's, it's not automatic. It's not just that it's not there. But right, but it could um, be there. No, but on the, the, the floor plan is to give you a sense of what the plan right. is, but we, we, I hope we have the ability to move things around inside the building as we approach our yeah. final drawings. So we hope that this yeah. would establish. Right. The, the type of building rather than specific interior right. layout. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Bruce, you might have gotten stuck on your plans in the preliminary stage, but we continue to mutate as before. Well. Not exactly what I was expecting, but it, it'll do. It will do. To get us to the next place. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not expecting, but what I was expecting. Okay. 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 This is still from Gray Street, but more towards the women's club. So we're still on Gray Street. Yes. We're Street. looking at the angle. Right. So we're first down looking north. Now we're coming to <coughs> northwest. This is a driveway, and the parking is behind this right building. Mm -hmm. So the driveway will be like right going that way. Yeah. Right. Right, right, there. right here. Yeah. So yeah. excuse me. The parking mm -hmm. then yes. is yes. behind yes. the building. Right? Yes. And yes. will not be a parking lot seat. We we street. have one space reserved in here. Yes. Yes. But that's still great. Made of the boss. Yeah. Well, this view is on, and I'm talking to my colleagues here now. I, I think it's important to note that one of the elements of this scheme is a studio, which is a, a big block of space uh, that doesn't have any meat at windows or doors or anything into it, and that has been moving around the, the parcel in the various schemes we've had. And uh, with various conversations we've had, we've kind of been pushing the design team to get it away from the western edge because it was a mess that was blocking. And, and I know I was advocating for lowering that. So it comes across to the eastern side. I think we have to bear in mind that what we see there is perhaps uh, a, a reasonable addition of what it might actually look like and and, and, and given the, the pragmatic needs of, of the applicant we probably should expect not so to uh, have something like that somewhere so not so Bruce we we uh, we may well we're not averse to putting elements yeah. in the facade even though it's blank there are many yeah. buildings in town where there used to be windows and you can see them there goes yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do something like that if Jim goes okay. they could be you would do it something for the aesthetics, even mm -hmm. if it's not really function. Because function is fitting in, mm -hmm. not running a yeah. studio. So, well, I understand so that. It's yeah. there, but it doesn't have to look like it's there. Right, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. me, yes. And I think we had discussed this last week when it was on the other side that indeed, even if there were real windows put in there so that the studio space could potentially be a conference hall as well with yeah. black curtains for the studio use, there are ways that one could. Adapt. I'm working on them, but I haven't got very far yet. Okay. Okay. Yes. Craig, can you tip that so the eye level is a little higher there? So 
because what I want to yeah, it's keep going down. That's keep that's going. the direction. Ah. The reality is that's 25 feet to the inside edge. It's a macadam. I think it's an asphalt sidewalk on this side. So the distance from the face of the building to that asphalt, uh, the inside edge of the sidewalk, is 20. It might actually be 28 feet. Is that this dimension? Yeah, that dimension there. So the sidewalk is 28 feet. So that's okay. another 10 feet to the street curve. And if you spin it a little this way, uh, Clay, yeah, and go down a little bit. Now, where that other corner is on Main Street, the the uh, southeast corner of the building there. So this one or this one? That's 44 this, this, this feet to that same asphalt sidewalk. Yeah. So, from there to, yeah. so when it was a flatter view, you got the impression that maybe it's only the length of a person lying down, but it, you've got to get a tip to see what the actual dimension is. Okay. So we'll keep going around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, um, this is some, from the same spot on Gray Street, looking directly east up Main Street. Okay. <coughs> is that a person then? Yeah. This is right in the corner of Main Street and Gray Street. For the back of where we're just looking for. And that's the closest point, it's 10 feet from the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Well, in, that, in the southeast corner, it gets to uh, 12 or 13 feet from the sidewalk. And the sidewalk splays wider at that right. point right. as well before you get to the street curve. So you're farther away from the street curve <coughs> in the southeast corner than the 10 feet that... Right. At the smallest point. Right. The closest point to the sidewalk is yeah. right here. So you're going to continue around and look more. So then now we're kind of looking at the same spot, just kind of more up Main Street. So we're heading looking toward Triangle. Yeah, right. Yeah. So this this triangle is right up here. This is uh, right on Main Street, looking directly at it. This is kind of the bird. Why don't you tip that up? That's the whole house. Yeah, I'm going to look there. So, there we're seeing those distances. You can see that 10 feet right at where that purple line is about where the sidewalk, the inside edge, the north edge of the sidewalk is. Um, you know, it splays down further, so you kind of see the distances. Right, and there you can see where the entrance is going to be under that triangle. So that, that triangle is the, is the kind of indication of a peak over the... Yeah, as Bill was saying, that's like still great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I missed that. Yeah. So, we're going up the street a little bit. This is kind of taking a long time. <laughs> oh, we're it's the same guys so going. Yeah. I said these were fly bys. Mm -hmm. Fly. Fall bys. <clears throat> Do something like this. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, that's, that works well. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly the same. That's the nice thing about the use of the from the camera kind of the tripods, you know, exactly where this is going to So with this elevation, I was curious, you know, what's the height of the, um, you know, the, yeah, the, the eaves for, you know, in the corner? So, you know, it looks like it's buried on the western end, but then taller. That's on 10 the, feet, 10 feet on the uh, southern end. 10 feet. And then the grade goes up yeah. three, three feet or something naturally. But what do you mean when it's 10 it's feet? 10 feet to the eave there. That corner. Yeah. Yeah. It's 10 feet. So that would be higher on that little part that's out jutting out to Main Street. It might be like 13 or 14 feet. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. just a little, uh, what do they call it? Hurricane Peak? They call it? No, he said this is less yeah. than this. Yes. Of course. By about three feet. Because we're not making in any changes in the interior. On the floor, making it all absolutely level. Okay. Any 
Take, you're taking us onto Triangle Street now? Yeah, so now we're kind of back, kind of close to Triangle Street, looking down at street level. Yeah, let's go back. So you can actually see the burn a little bit. Go up on Triangle Street. the parking lot, you will see the cars parked from Triangle? Oh, Triangle. Well, well uh, there's a retaining wall there probably, so you might Yes, yeah, the parking lot's level, more or less level, so that there would be a retaining wall or a fence ah. or something, so that would probably cut off. Uh, if we can get it three feet high, yes. then we don't need to have any fence over it, because the reason for the fence in parking lots is to protect the neighbors from the headlights. It's, it's not a safety issue. So that would be good to do here, or we'll plant bushes. Or planting, yeah. You, you don't well, want we to had it. one, um, it was actually an Amherst building in the Dickinson Historic District where they were going to keep a permanent uh, dumpster, and we required that it have plantings around it. So maybe just something like that. We, they assure us that there's no dumpster. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying if, if we wanted to there's shield there's it, there's, there's, yes. just, there's ways we could Exactly. They have virtual throwaways. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe you can look down at from the Hills House. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a women's club. Women's club. Women's club up here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now this may. I um. Do you anticipate? Because that's still all your property, Amherst. Uh, would you be fencing it? Or no. No. Okay. And you're that would be the worst thing to do at this point, especially in front of you to say we throw it. <laughs> no, yeah. it would stop you mass students from crossing. As I as I described, that land has got to be part of that one parcel yes. now, yes. because the zoning requires a certain amount of coverage, maximum right. coverage. Okay. So we're depending on that land to comply with the zoning. And we want to blend into the viewscape, obviously. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fences are attractive nuisance. Okay. So those are yeah. we, see it from, we see it from gray as if you're coming into the parking lot. You know, from the coming down gray, yeah. yeah. Down down gray street. Yeah, down gray then. That's where the land won't be sloping up. Right up. Yeah, this right. the, the, the part of the contours in the land as shown right now are kind of just massive entire neighborhood. So it hasn't been edited at all. But this does have the the bulge. The, uh, yes. the bulge there it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. 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 And quite turn it a little counterclockwise again. Um, oh, I, I thought we were taking when we were in the field uh, and we had that large surveyor stick, mm -hmm. uh, we set it against the lower peak <coughs> of 14 Gray Street. The, upper, the other peak is higher. And that lower peak also is up three or four feet because the, the land goes up there. And we had our building then I think at 26, now we're down at 22. And it was from where we were to that 22 foot <coughs> peak and where they are at their 26 foot peak higher up, we were lower, uh, and now we're lower still by four more feet. We're getting a little too low. And the other thing is, as they, as the houses step up Gray Street, they've all been set back and they've all been set on their own kind of plinths of earth, you know, so they, they actually go higher and higher up, uh, which if we took a view from the corner of Gray and uh, Maine and looked up Gray Street, you could kind of maybe see the relationship of the peak of the highest peak of our building to where everything is going uphill in Gray Street. But you stepped up the yeah. idea. Yeah. 
but is the hill is sloping. Yes. Yeah, I think that shows how we fit into the residential character of the Gray Street and help it look like a block. Well, you definitely did. I, I think you did. It's a big drop in the high gray street. Yeah, the way the flipping of for the higher peak to be on gray, I think, was very helpful. Can we see from south of Nate, down? do you have any more? Yo, no, I just think we south of Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, We're standing on the porch of Bill's house, looking oh, down my driveway, yeah, okay. and over here is the mm -hmm. building. That's the full expanse of 401 Main Street, mm -hmm. the higher building, and then to the right of the driveway is the old lumberyard restaurant and Elvin's hot tub. Right. Mm -hmm. Now okay. called Bill's house. Well, thank you very much. This is very revelatory. Thank you. <laughs> um, or do any of the, do you have any questions or comments? I'll, I'll yeah. say this. I mean, this is a different building than last time. But of course, compared to the rest of you, my colleagues, I've been more or less able to visualize this, and it's very, very reassuring to me, and I guess for you all too, that we now seem to have that same uh, clarity of what is being proposed that I think I had because I've been brought up to imagine this stuff. So I think the learning from this exercise for the commission is that we must require and we must be clear with applicants, I mean, I think, um, going forward, particularly for substantial new additions or completely new buildings, that applicants must come on day one with this kind of um, presentation. It's taken us weeks to get here, and, and it's so simple and clear now. Yeah, although it did also take, I have to say, we've been iterating on I know it's yeah. improved. It's not, right. not, yeah. it's not the same. Right, right. It's smaller, it's smaller. I'm, I'm not suggesting that we've wasted our time in that regard. I'm just saying that if we had to be developing the scheme, right, and you're right. using this being able to other, visualize you know, it, right, you know, block models and, and, and drawings and things, I think it would have made right. No, I think that's a point well taken. I think for, it's a lesson we right, should take to our yes. submission. Right, I appreciate that. And I have to say for myself personally, I think. You know, I would still need to see, as you said, Mr. Gillen, the, the details so we have a, you know, a picture of what it literally is going to look like. But I feel like we have, in terms of the massing and the proportions, and the location, right, and the berm, yes, beam, that we, I know we would have mm -hmm. to formally do this, but that we could move forward to the next step. Um, maybe this is probably colleagues as well, but I came prepared today having thought a lot about this. I, mean, I know Bill well, I, I work with him, he's a friend, and I like what he does, but I wasn't happy with what I had seen up until the beginning of this meeting. And since we hadn't had any indication that there was going to be something new, um, I had thought, well, I'm going to move to deny. And the move to deny was based on inappropriate scale in this location. That was the finding that, and that motion would have invited you all to either agree or not to share that opinion. And if we share that opinion, then we're done here, at least, because we would have denied the certificate of appropriateness based on inappropriate scale. Um, I think that we asked that. I don't feel personally anyway that uh, I'm inclined to present that motion at this moment, and I'm pretty sure I was the only one on the commission that would have had a mind to do so. So 
to say to a point, uh, Jennifer, we should somehow uh, perhaps find a way to concentrate that particular finding, if you like. But, but anyway, I feel that we are no longer um, faced with a scheme that is that we can move to the next level from, of the a, from a scale yeah. point of view. Right. Uh, which for me was a huge big deal because uh, I felt there was, and I still feel that there might be a better way of doing it, but then we're having an architectural disagreement and <coughs> as Jim said at one point in the meeting, that, that that's, we didn't say it, but he implied it and I agree. That's not my role here, it's not to make it my building. That's not my job as an architect on this commission and I would hate to think that anybody thought that might be the case. But my job here is to have a certain role in it and so forth. So I think we're, we're probably at a point where we can really, and I haven't yet turned my attention to thinking about how any of the proposals that we've seen today could be made better and improved. I haven't turned because that was a refuting my basic thesis, which was that it was inappropriate to begin with. So now my mind is, is to turn to wanting to think about how this scheme, as it stands here, could be improved if we have a mind to, as a commission, uh, take yeah. that on. And I have to ask uh, just procedurally, Nate, um, we're still in the you know, public portion right. of the meeting. and. If we're not at the point to vote on the certificate of appropriateness, because we need to see a more refined, but so is it a vote or just a general agreement that we're? I think there can be an agreement by consensus that you know if this massing in site location is appropriate, then it gives the applicant you know enough like Bill said um, information to go forward with, and then do you know refined drawings to present. So. You know, right, I would consider that we keep the public hearing open. We can't accept new information until that's closed. So you know, the hearing would stay open until you know the commission has enough information to close it and make a determination. So, uh, yeah. I mean, so I we think, could just do a consensus. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll close. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, we have to you know hear from more of the commission members what they think about the design. Then, um, you know, if there's questions too, um, I think I agree. I mean, I think some of it is. You know, the commission can look at structure. So, you know, to me, if the berm is a foot or less, it's no longer a structure. So, it's I think it's out of their jurisdiction. I just want to confirm that height. The um, you know, but then there's retaining walls, and we don't know what the entryway is going to look like on Main Street. Right. Well, there. that's all part of right. coming back so with I, the next. Right. Yeah. So, I think there's a lot of things to still look at. I I agree. But just just to be clear, because I'm so new to reading these kinds of images, we're looking from the down at this view, this is the porch of the Hills House. So essentially, the Women's Club and the Hills House still have would have clear open, open yeah, space, unobstructed, unobstructed yes. views in front of them. Exactly. Yeah, unobstructed view. But that's we'll go to public comment. It's going to be yeah. A debate about whether it's unobstructed. Right. How that's defined, but I think I know what you're saying. Jim? Well, I think that they've done many things that we've certainly proposed and suggested and made respectful changes, but I think we should see those final Oh, we will. Drawings. We will. It's just really giving them the go ahead exactly. to go to that stage. Yeah. yeah, I think we're at that point to say medium yes. So, <laughs> as a straw code, I could. I propose that uh, the commission finds. Yeah, I, can I just say something? We're, we're, we're allowed to. We're, no, no, this is just, a, this just is, for clarity yeah. amongst uh, ourselves. Uh, they presented, and then the procedure is that we can ask questions and talk among ourselves before we ask for public I'm comment. Suggesting, I'm not suggesting the contrary. Uh, what I'm wondering is to the extent to which a straw poll of any kind is appropriate before you've taken public comment. It's, it's, it's as if you've already uh, made some decision about moving forward without uh, accepting public comment on this proposal. Um, yeah, I, I, we don't have to argue that point. I think. Let's, let's yeah, I, I think we can agree that we're comfortable with, um, yeah, with this sizing and mass. 
Yes. No, I was going to say yeah. we can we can do an as protocol if we. I, I think we I, want to before because before the end of the day today, give the applicant some indication that they can confidently or comfortably. Yeah. Proceed. No, we do that. We and can send we them. We can do that after we've heard well, public comment. I don't know. Me, what we do. Yeah, no, I, mean, I think we haven't heard from all the commissioners yet. Yeah. So if we're still in the questions and answers, then I think we can, you know, go through that um, phase. But I would, I would like to s s clarify for everyone the procedure that we're going to use, make sure we understand it and that the public understands it. We've heard the presentation. We've had a great deal of questioning and some discussion. I suggest that we go to public comment for not more than 10 minutes. It's 10 to 5 now, I believe. And that we then come back to see if we're ready to have consensus, but not any kind of binding vote, on the mass proportion siting location issues. And if we and if we pass that part of our discussion, we then be as specific as we can with windows. Roof, I mean, all kinds of architectural detail that we want to see at our next meeting. So that would possibly take us from five to shortly before six, maybe to quarter of six when we could have some time for discussion of that. Well, yeah, we may need more than, so what time is it? Um, ten to five? It's ten yeah, because yeah. we had talked about. You know, since we have so little time to talk among ourselves, that that and the procedure is that we, I, I'm not saying we will not heed your suggestion, but the procedure is that the applicant presents and then we ask questions and then we discuss and then we go to public hearing and then we make some decision. So, yeah. what you're talking about is already existing in the trade and it's called design development. And uh, it's what we will be presenting to the planning board. It's what we normally have to present to the zoning board. Those are where you've got the elevations, plans, but you don't have the dimensions and the beam size and all that. Yeah. We all those. understand that we can't issue the certificate of appropriateness until, until we come back from right. the next. So that's why we can yeah. have some, we don't need to have public comment in whether we can discuss among ourselves whether we're comfortable with this, you know, size, mass, and position on the lot, because we're not, having any vote now to issue a, a final certificate of appropriateness. So um, I would say if between us and our conversation now, is there anything that you would like to add? No, I, I think it would be nice to hear the so public comments. Because we'll yes. we cannot talk outside of this. <coughs> it, it, right, so this is our only opportunity to sense among ourselves how we're responding to these uh, newest designs. Um, okay, so we will, how many, uh, can I just get a show of hands about how many we have for public comment? Yeah. Okay, um, so we will go until 5.30, let's say, yeah. that's 35 minutes. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start in order of going down the line this way. So, would you like, I guess you can. Ed Wilber. Yeah. Bright Street. Um, not on this uh, next house up, <laughs> up the street. Uh, I haven't seen uh, where the parking is going to be, and uh, uh, I don't know whether you can put the parking on this in the schema, but, but uh, I think that uh, uh, is a point that needs to be discussed. Can you put the, uh, the, can you put that PDF on the screen? The one from Gray Street we showed before? No, it's the PDF. Yeah, you can put that up. It's a site plan. If they can do it. Oh, I, I mean, I don't have it. I thought it would be incorporated in the models. Or pick up that. It's in the site. Well, well yeah. I could go directly from the top to use. The parking, yeah. The parking is back in here. There's a the, yeah. there's there's perpendicular the spaces. Okay. Here. <coughs> there's some spaces here, and there's a driveway. And along the driveway, there's a couple of spaces, parallel spaces here. It, they're set in the ground because they, it's level and the ground is picking up the height. This is my main grade. That's the back of the house for the parking. That's 
So do you have, um, can we move down the line? Did you have another comment, Mr. Wolford? No, that, uh, Okay, so moving down this road. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, actually, uh, is this dug in? Right? This is, yes, at this point it's about three feet below that grade here, so it's, you'll look right over it. Because this is all, the parking lot is about the same level as the main floor of the building. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's the ongoing question of, of, um, of the aquifer, uh, how much water there is in, in the hill, and, and is the building going to be uh, protected on, on, particularly from the west and, and north? Yeah, that's our civil engineer has worked up some kind of a drainage system that uses this grass area and adds a foot to the to the level of the ground in the course of doing that to get the drainage pipes high enough above the groundwater. So the civil engineer has worked that worked all that out. And the idea is that that uh, um, the water will be uh, piped out to Gray Street uh, uh, to the uh, Storm. Some of it is, and the, some of it is is instead uh, fed into the ground with a with a set of drainage tiles, mm -hmm. like a septic system. Only as mm -hmm. what the water. Is I'm concerned that that at, at times of the year, uh, recently uh, we've had a flood uh, with the sidewalk flooded. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to be greatly and, ameliorated because there's. There's drainage coming from up above that's going to be piped out mm -hmm. before we start work. I'm glad to see that you've got your uh, 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 this this studio. Is studio. I'm glad to see that the studio is not uh, sunk in at that mm -hmm. end because again. Uh, well, I don't need to cut off, but maybe can you continue because we're not going to. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, you can you can continue. Yeah. Yeah, we'll sure. the meeting. Okay, going down, uh, oh, Dr. Lewis, did you have? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just wanted to say thank you to the commission. I realize that this is not uh, a very easy job to take into consideration all of the many details. I think we've come with, um, you know, something that you all helped to shape, and I think we should all be proud of the process. And so, once again, I ask that we hold to the bylaws, and I think that's, uh, of course, what you all are doing. And um, I just appreciate us getting to this point. Thank you. <coughs> Look forward to the next phase. Um, okay. Um, Dorothy Pam. Yes. Um, I'd like to see a picture from the um, Amherst Women's Club towards the parking, because you know that lawn area is essential for the weddings that are held there, the, it, it, without which the Amherst Women's Club could not maintain the building, which is being very expensive again this year. So it needs to have that good view. You, know, you had a free shot of that. Yeah, I was uh, up a bit above that. Women's Club is basically more. Kind of ground level. level. So this is ground level from the front of the Women's Club. Kind of looking over. So no. when, when the, uh, <laughs> could you show where the parking at, is? At yeah, this the parking point, is the concern there. At this yeah. point, the parking yeah. is three feet below that line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the it's sloping, find a way it has to, the these parking lot is level, so and that will, to some yes. extent, conceal it. Yeah. And of course, <coughs> we can always yes. plant shrubbery. Plant yeah. Yeah. Can, can we require the shrubbery there? Because I, I think that if from Amherst Women's Club you couldn't see the cars, that would be significant. Yeah, typically landscaping is exempt, but as new construction as part of screening, you can consider it. So the commission's done that before for the project. So. There's ways to word it as a condition mm -hmm. to make it perpetual or permanently maintained as uh, becomes, so it becomes a permanent screen as opposed to something that would be exactly and that's what we did with that dumpster actually yeah. um, but um, thank you for that comment and that uh, I, I just I, I don't want to respond to every comment but that is a concern yes, to us as well we share that uh, oh yes um, what had bothered me most about the other plan was that well, a lot of things bother me, which have been fixed, but one that I can't tell whether it's been fixed is the slope 
of each of the roofs. And they were quite different in the other scheme, so I would hope that maybe all of the various roofs could have the same pitch when they get done. So mm -hmm. they are. here it looks like it's, it's still. No, they're identical, seven and a half. It's, it, will they all three be the same? Mm -hmm. Exactly. That, that would be a huge improvement, I think, in terms of mass and scale, if they, the buildings at least matched in roof pitch. Thank you. Ms. Chris Bester, yes. Planning Director. I just wanted to suggest, and I don't know how this will fit into your process, but it would be possible, I think, for you to write up a list of recommendations for the Planning Board to consider, because the Planning Board will be considering this during a site plan review application. And if you had certain things like um, plantings or you know, things that may not specifically fit into your jurisdiction, you could make recommendations mm -hmm. to the Planning Board that they consider those things. What is the time frame for that? Well, Nothing has been submitted, and I assume that there's a lot more work that needs to be done with this location and the uh, grading and everything before it goes yeah, to I the think they're board. waiting on this yes. our yes. action yes. Yeah, before moving forward. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, really briefly, Can I'm Meg, Gage, Meg Gage, okay. District 1. Um, I, this is, I've been following this very closely and I just want to observe what a good process this seems to be today at this meeting. And this is about, all, there are no bad guys in this. This is about two sets of interests that we all care about both. Uh, Amherst Media has been trying to find a home for 10 years. They've been battling it out with Comcast. For various technical reasons, they have to be within a certain closeness to the middle of town. And our new, our government, particularly our new government, really depends on the service that Amherst Media provides is really key to our democracy. And at the same time, we also all value our amazing history of our town, and particularly the physical history and the beauty of, of it, and which is, of course, contro you know, extremely controversial because of um, other parts of town. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> uh, so these are, uh, these are all good interests. We're all there's no bad guy here, and it feels like this is about whether or not this complies with the bylaw, period. It's a legal thing, and I appreciate that that seems to be the focus. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Felicity Hardy. Uh, I'm the attorney for Harm's Way, um, which is the um, abutter and owner of Hale's House. have a couple of uh, observations for the commission to consider. Um, when we were here last, my understanding was that um, the commission was encouraging the applicant to uh, present three different scenarios. We don't have that. Uh, Mr. Colden had uh, mentioned that he thought it was important that at least one of the scenarios should contain a flat roof. We don't have that. Um, and um, from my perspective, I think that the modeling actually just underscores what I've been saying all along about this project, which is that given Amherst Media's programmatic needs, it's too much building for the space that is available here. Um, and it's unfortunate that we've had to go through, um, you know, quite a protracted um, uh, process of uh, trying to figure out what to do about this application. Um, but I think that in the final analysis, really, the problem is that it's too much building um, for this lot. And I wanted just to make sure that I understand. Oh, yes. Uh, one thing that I think is interesting about this massing model is it really does, I think, um, demonstrate as you go up um, Main Street towards Triangle, how much of a mass that that structure adds um, to that lot. I mean, it's just, it's a big structure. They need a lot of space. I get that. And I think what is going to happen is that um, the um, views of the Hills House and the Women's Club coming up on uh, Main Street, uh, moving into the center of town are going to be uh, inalterably affected. Um, and I strongly encourage the commission to really think about um, whether or not this, this 
design, albeit better than what has been presented in the past, but still just doesn't, um, is inappropriate given the scale of the building that they need and what the site has to offer. Um, okay, I, well, we can, res I don't want to respond as each person speaks, so we'll continue and then we can respond. Yes. Thank you, uh, Tony Brackett. Um, so the, these aerial shots, I think are helpful if you want to see the large geographical um, area, the area that you're talking about, but no one's going to be flying over this space. Okay. So I think it's helpful to see it from a, either a pedestrian's perspective or sitting in a car, because as you enter this area from the east, you're going to see this mass of building here. And it was at one point a concern of this commission to preserve the viewscape coming from the east. And it appears that you've all decided, although I've never heard anybody specifically mention this, that this is no longer a concern, because everybody seems to be very pleased with the mass that they see here, but it's completely obliterating the viewscape coming from the east. And what's going to happen if you approve of this is you will forever lose that expansive viewscape coming from the east. It's going to be gone forever. And you're not going to get to see that open expanse until you pass this, whether walking or driving from the east. Once you pass this building, then you're going to see that, that space, and it's going to be completely compromised. And I think it's inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any comments in the background? Yes. Uh, Eric Wilkinson on 20 Bray Street. I appreciate the comments on the process that this commission has established to, to review this project. I also appreciate the uh, uh, applicants bringing this tool here today. It does help us uh, visualize a little bit better. Um, I was struck, however, by your, your questioning of the applicant here today uh, along the lines of uh, that Tony just articulated of looking at the building and not looking at the building's impact on the streetscape and the historic nature of, of the building that it is adjacent to. Um, the, the, the purpose of the Historic Commission bylaw is to protect and preserve the streetscapes. Um, I don't see how this is either protecting or preserving. I think uh, it, is, it is harming the streetscapes. We're not going to be able to see the Hills House, the Women's Club, or the Emily Dickinson's house, the namesake of this historic district. This building will block from this approach completely. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Yes. Two more. Okay. Hi, my name is Chris Gadera. Um, uh, I am five on 446 Main Street, which is uh, to the right of this image, as well as 14 Gray Street, and uh, which is just up to the right there. Um, I, I have to say that the, I guess, a question that I think um, should be asked is how true the scale is on this, because I, I don't find that those views that showed, for example, the Hills House, the 38 Gray House, and so on, as a giant thing in back, it just looks like the scale of the different buildings aren't at equal scale. Um, that, for example. Uh, the other is if you know you have my building next door to it, just above the cursor there. That's a full yes, that's a full two-story building there, with the other half of it being the equivalent of three stories. Um, so if this building down here is said to be basically a one-story building, um, I don't know how that, that doesn't fit in in my mind. And that's, I like some clarity on that, as well as the, the, uh, the fact that there's gonna be a studio with presumably not windows, I guess maybe there are maybe 10 windows, I don't know. I can respond to the scale question. All the buildings, as accurate as I could, are to scale the heights, the um, widths, the lengths of the plan. And um, the reason these may look just so much bigger is how um, much higher they are in um, kind of elevation. Than 25 feet? 25, it's, yeah, 25 feet higher than these kind of front buildings on Gray Street. Um, those buildings are to scale, so it might just be kind of the way they, they look without um, 
the amount of trees, because there are less trees shown than there are in real life right now. So that might be also adding to the scale factor. Yes. Uh, Frederick Griffiths, Gray Street. Uh, a question about the parking. Uh, and I'm very happy to see that it's contracted, and I feel much better about that now. That it's hidden, but and it's eight spaces now. Am I right? Yes. And I, I welcome that, but I want to ask in part of a procedural question whether that is going to prove to be sustainable, especially given the possibilities of the next owner, which you have to take into account with any construction, obviously. In other words, what I worry about is you, you build that, and uh, for the programmatic, uh, programmatic needs of Amherst Media, eight may be sufficient, but should there be another owner, or should they find that not sufficient, then that there'll be a next step, presumably, that goes to you again. But you may end up with the situation of a building that is not sustainable at that level, next owner, or not settleable, can't be empty. The only use is if you extend, and all of a sudden you have parking going off to the west, so the use gate is further compromised. So I'm just wondering how sustainable, in the long run, given the chances of the world, the eight slots are going to be. I mean, if it's um, approved with a certain number of parking spaces, then someone would have to come back right. and request additional. You know, at the same time, you know, this commission won't always be this commission, and so right. we could, you know, not approve the whole project, and then right. Amherst Media well, comes I back. There's another commission, and, you know, the initial building sure. is approved. So but the, the problem is that if you have a non-sustainable building under that, and you won't want it to be empty, then, then the leverage that a next owner or even a media and, and some other uh, would have is, is going to be very considerable. So I'm, I, I'd like to know, give it some thought, if you would, please, procedurally on that, because... Uh, well, I guess, Nate, would, if there was a new, at some point, a new owner, they would have to come back to the local historic district to request more uh, I, just had, I, mean, I think there was also going to be a site plan review um, application to the planning board, and they regulate, yeah. you know, the site planning issues, whether it's the drainage or the parking. So I think there's, you know, different levels of review that may happen if there's a change in use. So, uh, you know, it's an interesting point. I don't think, you know, we're not presented with that as part of the application. So, you know, it's hard to hinge a condition or a permit on that, thinking that, well, could there be something different in the future? I mean, we're going to condition it or, say, approve it, if, if it were, with this, with the parking spaces as being presented. And if it changes, then it needs to go through the permitting again. I, I, but I think, you know, um, we're being presented with an open lot to the west and parking behind, and that's kind of what we can rule on without too much speculation in terms of what could happen in the future. Yeah, and I had a couple of comments, responses I just don't feel that I have to make. Um, in, in terms of our request that the applicant come back with some alternative designs, that wasn't a requirement. That was a request, and if the commission feels that there has been substantial enough changes made to the current design, that's not something we, we have to insist just because we requested it, that we can't go forward and, until that request is fulfilled. And in terms of whether Amherst Media is, you know, wants to create a larger space than they absolutely need, again, that's not, that's beyond our purview. I mean, we can't respond to, we can't, comment or uh, rule or have any, you know, upon what activity is happening inside the building. So it's not for us to say, well, if, if it meets, if we decide that it meets the proportions and dimensions that we think is appropriate for, that the commission feels is appropriate for the district, it's really not our place to tell Amherst Media that they don't need as much space as they're um, requesting. Uh, in, and I, I have to, I'm just going to say this, I don't know that there is um, any design proposal that the abutters would feel comfortable with. That's, that's the feeling that I'm getting. I, I have to just put that out there. So, um, you know, they, the, the owner of the property <laughs> is, it's within their right to you know, put a building there and it's, no, it's not going to look the same after the building is there as it does right now, but we're going to all work together to uh, make it the best that we can. Yes? Um, this is a difficult historical or background point to make, but I, I think it's appropriate. Uh, when, when town meeting approved the, uh, the uh, rezoning of this spot, there was no discussion of the implications 
of the local historic district. I think that when people took that vote, most town meeting members, since the local historic district was so new, had no idea of the implications of rezoning as an R, as a BG, I think. Yes, thank you. And so I think, I regret to say this, but I feel as a commissioner, my hands are tied by a decision that was not, that was made without full understanding of the implications of that decision. I do not want to lay blame anywhere, but it is what happened. It's the hand we've been dealt. It's the hand we've been dealt. And therefore, I feel bound by that decision, unable to say we can approve no building for that space. I regret the permanent loss of the view that has been described personally, but I feel captured by the decision that was made to rezone. I'd also like to add that at the meeting in March where the first applicant, the Amherst Media presented their first application, the abutters said that they understood that a building was going to go on those parcels, but the understanding was that it was not going to go in the middle of the lot on Main Street, but would go on the southeast corner on Gray, and that it would be smaller in scale. And we, you know, really took that to heart, and we've been working on that, you know, since March, and now we hear, well, you know, now the view is obstructed coming from the east, you know, and I would say working all together, we, we've done the best we can. But I feel like, you know, it, it's, we took the suggestion and now we're sort of hearing, well, nothing you put, put there is acceptable. Yes. I do find it a little bit strange though that we have the uh, Women's Club and the Hill House in this um, elaborate Italian mm -hmm. style. And then you have the row of, of New England houses which were moved onto Gray Street. And then we introduce a totally third style. So. I, I'm feeling a little mishmash. And well, we're hoping that the yeah. style, because I, I believe the architects have been trying to make the style compatible with Gray Street, and that's why we're not going to vote on issuing a certificate of appropriateness today, because we need to see the deep, actually what that is going to look like. But the I believe the thought processes was to make it compatible with the houses and and have it be a continuation of the houses on Gray Street. Yeah, if I could just add to that. Um, we have struggled with two style anchors, right? One style anchor being Gray Street, and the other style anchor being both the splendid Hills House and Women's Club, and the imitation of that in Mr. Gillen's office across the street. Mm -hmm. Other buildings on Main Street we would not want to echo. <laughs> Yes, all I was going to say in uh, Don't we have response. to be recognized? Yes, yes. yes. Could you oh, I'm sorry. You? Can you um, give your name again? Yes, Ms. Hardy. 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 Yeah. Um, what I was going to observe is that the commission's role is to determine whether or not the applicant and the application is consistent with the requirements of the uh, local historic bylaw or not. What, you know, what happened at town meeting or what Amherst Media's programmatic needs are, all of that's irrelevant. What you've got to figure out is whether or not it's consistent with the district. Right. And I'm confident that you are going to follow the bylaw and do the very best you can. Thank you. Uh, and you okay. it's, it's simply you're responding to various proposals, and you're getting public comment on those proposals, and that's it. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. Brackett. Thank you. Um, I appreciate listening to what you, the two of you had to say about the regret and the, the hand of the dealt, et cetera. But um, my question is to the commission, 
have you decided that the view state is not important anymore? Have you, you decided that the, the well, I mean, you're, it appears you're giving that up in order to accommodate that someone has a right to build something there. So well, I think we feel that the viewscape looking, that the viewscape has been left maybe 90%, I don't know, <coughs> for the commission The viewscape intact. from, it's, it's, you're yeah. exactly yeah. right. Yes. Coming from uh, into yeah. town, the viewscape yeah. is hard. Yeah. It yeah. is yeah. hard. Yeah. But that, you know, and as, as uh, Mr. Gillen said, he would have been in favor of having, leaving that a, an open field. That would have by far been the best option. If it would have been me, I'd give Amherst the money and they could build something great, you know, somewhere else that we could have it open. That would be ideal. Now, it is going to be hard. The question is, if some, if they don't build there and the lots are sold and two other houses are going to be, it might be even worse. You know, I don't think at this point we can deny that these building lots are have to be that, that it's got to stay open. I, mean, I think the word that, preservation, I guess, was the one that I was. Oh, right, but but there could be um, reasonable people could have different opinions on what's you know maintaining the historic integrity of the district. Can I say two things, please? Uh, um, at, um, at Severance yeah. Treasurer, uh, oh. at Severance Treasurer's uh, Amherst Media. Oh, okay. Uh, zoning change or not, it was also approved by the planning board to put two lots there. So if we weren't there, two buildings would still be there instead of just one. Mm -hmm. Secondarily, Clay, could you go along Main Street and show, first of all, get rid of the building, and go along Main Street and show where the tree behind the building blocks the hills out, please. From the house? Yes. No, no, no. From oh, the Main Street, street please. Oh, okay. If you can show where, 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 at what point in the intersection does the tree no longer block the Hills House? So, really, blocks good amount. Yeah, keep going. Until you can't get up here. Yeah. So, right there is the first place. Okay. Now, could you put the building back exactly in that location? Oh, oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's why we put it. In. It's a very small amount compared to the trees that block it right now. Are we down on the trying to ground here in this view, or are we still sort of up and down? We're pretty much. Well, main Street is about. Trying to make it flat? At six, at your, this is eye level. This is eye level, okay. Now take the building out, please, so we can see where the tree is. <laughs> well, yeah, that is a big difference. I was saying, there's a block in the view from the east side. And no, no, but you can see through the tree. So I was just saying, that's... I'm just saying, the tree blocked the view from the east side right here. It's not like you can come all the way to the and see the view up the hill. Those are river birch on my property. I don't think they claim that they really blocked it. Yeah, I don't know. I was just making the point. Much more in the summer than the winter. Okay, so we're this will be the last uh, comment. I just want to pick up on. And you said yeah. Jim Lusco, executive director. Um, picking up on the viewscape, I, I think it's, it's we you got to go back in time. What you wanted to do is that the moving of the houses and the the location destroy the the, the viewscape. And, and as you come down the street and they have the trees behind them and they have all that. That is truly the loss of viewscape, if you will, from coming down grade, from looking up grade. That ruined it, quite honestly. So when people talk about ruining a viewscape, I think you have to realize that, that a majority of that's been the damage. We walked in here. That was done prior to the Historic Commission mm -hmm. uh, District being uh, created. The, those, those buildings wouldn't have the siting they have on now if there was a Historic Commission in, in its place. So what we're looking at right now is trying to preserve that that view up to the two homes, both the, both are hills, houses, right? Originally, if you want to get historical, is that we've done the most we could to preserve that from Main Street, looking north for that viewscape. When you stand on the corner of Gray and Main, where our building is proposed, there's very little of those houses. You can't see the Dickinson Museum because of the trees from that viewpoint. So please keep viewscape to a realistic and go stand on those streets. You can't see them. So what we're trying to do, and we've done for you, we feel 
for the district and for yourselves is move as far to that east that we could to preserve that viewscape that exists. Okay. Thank okay. you. So I think um, can we have a motion to um, well. Are we closing the public portion or because no, no because we're continuing, the meeting will continue. Right, okay. Right, we have, yeah, no, we also have the rest of it. I think it would be important for the commission just to have a recap of the comments yeah. and everything. If, you know, there's, there hasn't really been, to me, a consensus that this massing or proportion is sufficient to go forward. So I think after hearing the comments, the commission wants to have a discussion and provide the guidance to the applicant. I think, you know, that's the, where we are now. Uh, it's five, you know, 526, we have about half an hour. I just want to you know, have a recap of what the commission wants to decide, provide guidance to the applicant on how to move forward. Um, you know, we have to then set a next a next date. But right. we would keep the public hearing open. If we close it, we can't accept new information. You know, how does, right. you know. We just keep it on right. going as we have to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, otherwise, you know, I think there's too much detail to let right now to make a full determination on this project. Oh, we, we definitely can't. And I, well, I feel strongly that we, we can't vote on a, a certificate of appropriateness until the point that we absolutely see what the building is going to look at. But if they're, you know, picking up where we started before public comment, um, is there a consensus or feeling that we can uh, ask the applicant to, to move to the next point that we're comfortable with the size and the uh, height, the massing of it? Well, in, in terms of the, uh, this is, as I said, I was, sure. yeah, I was prepared to uh, move to deny based on the, uh, the requirement here that the commission shall consider appropriateness of scale, shape and proportion of the building and structure. And, um, and I think that uh, whereas we may have uh, had uh, additional concepts presented and so forth that may have indicated that we might have done even better. Uh, but I would move that the scheme is presented in its, this is not a schematic design, this is a conceptual massing design. This is this is the lowest form of animal life when it comes to a, a, an architectural solution. But it's the first form of animal life, and therefore it's important. And uh, so I guess I would uh, propose, uh, whatever, in a, in a non-formal sense, that the commission considers that the scheme, the concept as presented, um, is acceptable within the consideration of appropriateness of scale, shape, and proportion. There are other criteria in 8.2 which we will move to, but it does seem to be, <coughs> to be important for the applicant to know if we agree with what I just said. Uh, it's strange that I should be the one to move it, but I just want to, it's done in the interest of achieving clarity. and. Uh, so if we if we if we support that proposition, uh, we can say so. If we don't, we should also say so. And we could go around one of the time more. We ask for a second. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can you call this a sense of the meeting? Is that a, a sense of the meeting or a consensus or? Right. Right. I don't think you need a second you don't for need the a purposes second. that I'm okay. talking about. It's really just to be. We're, we're trying to we're trying to be clear to ourselves firstly, and in doing so publicly, we are also being clear to the applicant. To the applicant. And it's uh, it's the level of commitment or the level of declaration that allows the design team to invest more money and time and effort in a given direction, with the reasonable expectation that they will be not shut down for having built that on an unsound foundation. So that's the intent. Is that a motion? I know. No, she's well, it's, 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 it
I don't want to put you on the spot, but how are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that um, Mr. Gillenstone has followed our lead a lot. I, I still think I I agree that the um, I'm sorry that um, the building will change the view, but I think it's not our job. We we're not in town meeting. I mean, I would have voted to have that be town land, but it's not. So so I guess reluctant. Yeah. And I want to just clarify, the vote wasn't for it to be town land, just if it could be rezoned. Rezone. Rezone. Yes, sorry. Because it was always Rezone. owned by somebody, somebody that wasn't it was parcels. It wasn't they public were land. Yeah. Yeah. And I would have wished that it be that it wasn't for town land. That's, but are you, um, would you be comfortable with them moving to the next step of, of detail of the facade? And Given that situation. I think it would be a good idea to move to the next step. I think we're all pretty much an understand that they have done their best to accommodate some of the issues that we brought forward, and particularly in terms of massing and the heights of the buildings and moving it down to the southeast corner more, setting it back Massing from the burn. sidewalk. Uh, there's a number of things that have been done that have been positive, and you know. Certainly, there does seem to be a sense here that it's moving forward positively, but we do need to see some more details to actually take a vote. Well, I, I go with Rita reluctantly. I, you know, I mean, you have the points that we made, you have really accommodated them in a very, very good way. So, yes. We'd love to see the next. Level. Yeah, I do. I would love it to be a little smaller, looking a little bit differently. But and do you see anything that could be done with the, the detail of the facade that would accommodate, would not accommodate, but respond to your concerns? Can we have the picture back in the image? Really? Sorry, I got cut. Articulate it correctly. I am just very, when I see the outline of that sort of, and I personally love country style homes, and I see that, and then when I drive by, so I get conscious everywhere I drive in the Pioneer Valley of what I don't want it to look like. Um, on Route 9, on the south side of Route 9, right before you get to university, there's a building, <coughs> it's, it's called um, Heirloom. Yeah. I think it's called Heirloom Cooperative. It's, it's, it's going to be, yes, that is going to be a, dis We're going to look be a just dispensary. Like right, no, but it has that, it kind of looks country style, but it, it has that sort of prefab kind of look. And I, I am just very concerned that it not look like that with just, you know, a flat facade with the wood planks all the same size and shape going across. So that's, yeah. I, I guess I would like to see it with some charm. Well, that's and I know that, charms that's in the eyes of the culture. That's that's just the that's the right. next step. I mean, uh, you could also ask the question as to whether uh, tip roofs as opposed to gable ends on those buildings would would be uh, uh, beneficial from the point. That's of fifty years later. What's that? That's fifty years later. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, I don't know anything really. Not about that. Uh, what I do know is that the. The consistency of up and down Gray Street is that they are gable ends and it's gable. They should be gables. These are um, gables. Um, but it's it's also certainly true that a hip diminishes scale and and uh, we are on the corner and we've got two gables pointing at us and if we want to diminish scale we could uh, we could they could, those those gables could be flattened back into what are called hips. Um, 
and the building will look smaller as a yes. consequence. Um, now that, to me, is, is at this point is a detail which we could get to talking about uh, later because uh, but those are the kind of but things. But are those the kind of details, level detail we're going to ask them to come back with? Oh, we, could, we could talk for, we, yes, once we get past this, right. uh, you know. So I, 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 have, I, I do, I think there without actually taking a vote, there is a consensus that we would like them to move to. Ask so we can move to the next step. you just declare yeah. that that's true and have okay. people refute it. <laughs> I just wanted to add, uh, I think uh, changing the roof line is more than a mere detail. And uh, I've been giving myself a crash architecture for dummies um, a course I to be, try to be helpful here. <laughs> yeah, give it to Bill when you're done. And uh, I mean, things such as uh, a hip on hip, for example, hip with flat or deck. Um, a clipped gable, these are all possibilities that would pull the peak down, provide space, possibly not do it on the Gray Street side, but to do it elsewhere in keeping with the main, I mean, these are things um, that I, 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 kind of following on, on what Dorothy was saying, uh, Mrs. Penn, that Everything doesn't, we were talking about everything being Gray Street because we didn't want a pastiche. And we certainly didn't want to reflect certain aspects of Main Street as it currently is. Nor did we want to faux 1860s. No, we didn't. But there are some interesting things that could be done with the other roofs, particularly the one on the corner, to, pro to still provide space for the occupant, but to, but to pull it down a bit. So uh, I'm interested in that as something more than a detail. It's not yes. Okay, a so partial. can we just step back for a second? Yes. I under, what I hear is that we have an agreement that we are comfortable with the, the scale and the massing. Of course, we'd like to, if it could be smaller, and where it's situated on the lot, and we would like to ask the applicant to come back with a more detailed, we, that we need, before we can issue a certificate of appropriateness to vote one way or the other, we need to know exactly what the building is going to look like, and we are going to ask them to come back with a more detailed visual. Of, and I guess I, as not an architect, I can't say, well, well I, I, I want to see. I think at this stage, we have uh, some yeah. suggestions, and, and I've made one which, uh, as I said, um, uh, hip, I think, and then the partial hip, which is a, a little more elegant and a little more expensive um, way of doing things, might be an approach that would uh, improve things. Um, I'm only trying to, um, I'm not really speaking for myself here so much as um, offering approaches that, that may uh, find favor with, with you all. Another is the, uh, the roof around the, could you swing around to Main Street and look at the main entry? Uh, there's a, a little uh, titular gable there, which is really just there to, as Bill pointed out, to alert us to the fact that something needs to be there because it's an entry, and today of all days, it would make it very clear as to why it's important. Um, I was wondering whether I should have brought my white out um, but another way of doing that which which you might find favor with folks is to bring this roof plane straight down but at a, a lower angle so that it comes out and then uh, shoots the snow out and uh, um, basically I, you know, creates a, a diminished or a, a more friendly scale. I mean, something like that um, might also be a way of working that entrance in a way that would actually get all of the snow out of the entrance rather than pushing some of it back into the front. And, and also, at the same time, uh, bring the scale down to, you know, to where people feel good. So there's two thoughts, those two thoughts, 
But if we have other thoughts, we could prepare them, and if we don't, we could leave it to the skill of well, one the thing I said, to, it's, you know, to read just, our minds. Right, just, no, no, just some fine. difference, I don't know, a texture is the, it's just not all, just a solid, you know, some detail where you sometimes have shingles going in one direction and, you know, it scales and yeah. attempt to break the line. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Jim, you were starting to say something. I, I was just thinking it, where you, they would be losing the square footage on that floor, but actually that's a storage that's area storage. on the second floor, second mm -hmm. part of the uh, one near to Gray Street. Yeah. So you mean if they, if they, if they tip the roof tip in? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I like the idea of keeping the uh, Greek revival style, which is predominant in that neighborhood, and uh, you have it in some of the earlier plans. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. It's a, it gives it a sense of elegance. Different things. It's for a sense of scale, not the say creating a faux 1840s, right. but using that as the massing model as the, as the guide. I'd like to go back to something I said way back a few meetings back that you know, for all of this disturb and drama of this the image of young people coming and going from these buildings mm -hmm. working the creative work that's that's useful in their development that's useful to the town all of that all of that finally is, is so motivating and so pleasing to you know that, that that's that we're in, I, that we're in such agreement with that as a board, and uh, at least that's my, my sense of it uh, about the board. We haven't met something which is you know, So you know, it, it, it's a little bit like, and it feels like it would be better, but it was like coming back, a concern, coming back from one summer vacation, and suddenly there were these high-rise apartments in the center of town. And the, how did that happen? Well, this is not that. This is not happening that way. And for all the pain, that the, the anguish, that, that, the, the, and the exhaustion that you were bringing forward in us, who are sort of trying to wrestle with it, that I think I think it will serve as well as as the process moves forward, and it's a creative process that that, that, that really has the support. So. That's good, <laughs> and and it's you know, Amherst kicking and screaming into the modern age. You know, you just you don't want things to change, but, but, but to accommodate it has has to. So when they put the planter in the rotary, it was like, oh. <laughs> so I mean, there are ways ways that you get used to things, and then they can become beautiful and part of your environment. So I just hope that that's what we're heading towards. Thank you, Maria. So. What I would be looking for next uh, would be real detail on the window treatments. I am, as I remain very concerned about the Main Street facade, I'd like to see the detail of the entrance. You did some very nice work on the entrance in earlier iterations where it was set back, where the uh, you know kind of gable came forward, and um, and you had a instead of steps, you had a kind of flat access. So that that makes that corner uh, where the two buildings meet more interesting and complicated and not look as if they're just kind of stuck together. So I'm concerned about that. Uh, I would like to imagine a good bit of glass in the opening to the portico. I think that the more glass, the better in terms of a modern, more modern image on the Main Street side. Uh, I am very concerned now, of course, that we built the studio, that there be real windows and that there be consideration with your, with your client about how you might possibly have uh, blackout curtains or whatever it would be so that they're not ghost wi windows because if you are maintaining that gray street look, those are all real windows. Uh, I don't know that the windows need to necessarily be the same on the west. I mean, the, the facade might differ. I don't know what ideas you have. I certainly am very concerned about the facade that would be seen from Triangle. I'm interested to see how you would be handling the pentiments, for example. I would be interested 
and I think in this case you could bring in at least two different versions of ways to handle the roof lines. Whether you wanted to do if at some point, whether you wanted more detailed pediments toward gray stream and however you wanted to do that, it would be it would save us all time if you could bring in several possibilities so that we could compare and contrast and say, yeah, this really works better than that rather than having to go home and do it again and all come back. So I, I'm also interested in the materials that you plan to use. Uh, in other cases, we have actually seen examples of the materials. The petitioners have come in you know, with parts of windows and with uh, examples of what the siding will be. So there's a, uh, a great deal of work ahead of you lucky people. And I would, uh, but we really need to see it all before we can say yes. Yeah, I would say you know, two things, just picking up on that. I totally agree that even though, so the, the western facade that's facing on Triangle Street, you know, just so it doesn't look like the back of a house that would normally have a fence behind it, because <coughs> that is going to be the visual from across. You know, unless you're going to have, you know, foliage that's, you know, green year round mm -hmm. um, to screen it, but that, you know, I would ask that that, you know, be considered as, even though it may be, feel like the back of the structure, that it's going to be seen across the green so that, you know, that pays attention to in terms of, you know, the visual appearance. Um, yeah, and then I, I think I'm going to Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Oh, and in terms of the, what I did want to say, in terms of also bringing the material in, if I remember correctly, um, the only other structure this commission has had to applicant that we, has application has come before us for a home structure was on Peace Place. And they actually brought, showed us a visual of exactly what the house was going to look like. It almost looked like a photograph. So I guess we're thinking of that level of detail. Uh, I mean, it's really up to the commission, but, you know, I think, you know, Bill, you provided, you know, like a, a written specification and then some some images of what it could look like. You know, I think what the commission is saying, they have like a little bit more than that, whether it's, um, you know, I mean, I think a photograph of something that, you know, is, you know, taken, whether it's, you know, uh, in, a, in a way that the commission can get a sense of the scale and proportion, if it's a siding or corner treatment, I think a photograph can work. Um, yeah, Peace Place did, uh, it was probably, you know, like a, I don't know if it was a, a Photoshop thing, but it was, but you know, I, I don't know, I mean, some of it would be, you know, what you do with this model, if you're going to continue to work with it, or what your architectural plans are all based and show, you know, in terms of the detail you want to bring, but, um, I mean, I, I still think photographs can be really helpful. Um, we, I think for Peace Place, we, we, I felt that I was looking at a facsimile right, that's of what like. was about to be built. We had very strong suggestions. And the, and I mean, the it was even down to the color. Like right. the, yes, and the materials. It really, what, what we saw, looked like a facsimile. And that gave me confidence in the fit of that proposed new building to other places already on Peace Street. And I would not have had that confidence otherwise. We had concerns about size, mass, scope. It was all pulled in. Right, there was major changes made from what they initially But we had confidence in what we would see as the end product. And we wouldn't be surprised by it, yeah, no problems. Um, okay, so there's, do, do you have any more? Need any more oh, we'd have to digest that. Yes, yes, that out, okay. Have you ever done something that they're talking about? And would it be easy? Adding like, detail on well, instead of just dropping this into a model environment, you actually drop it into the Google landscape. So it's a real landscape and real sighting. It'd be something more like you know, you're saying, but like a Photoshop image yeah. like a regular building. I can find a visual, I can send it, what we got We've done a couple of those years early on. It was Peace a bit, it was a bit of generated, yeah. more or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Once oh, wow. the building is <laughs> 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 yeah. what, what can these kids do? Can you do options? I mean, can you do roofline options? 
not no. the best program. No, we, we can't really go in. We shouldn't have design by committee. Yeah. We should yeah. bring to you right. you should, what we exactly. propose, and you exactly. should say yes. Yes, exactly. I like his idea. I like that. Yes. Now, Bill, what we're saying is maybe you could have two options that we could see this. Not to the extent you're talking about detail now. And no, that's I exactly mean, why yeah, we want to proceed at that's something right. that, because okay. it's it's big money now. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. And it's mm -hmm. beyond our ability. We couldn't have to hire another kid mm -hmm. to, to, to make this look like a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have to set. Um, well, I think the commission had asked for a different roof lot, <coughs> different treatment to the gable end. So I mean, that was something that was asked for. You know, to have a few different, I you know, concepts shown for what could happen with the gable ends, whether or not you know it is diminished somehow through, you know, whether it's a hip roof or something else. I, I think, think it's our choice. They, you know, we we'll propose to you what we think, what we feel is the right thing. It, 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 we're working with, we're living with it all day long. Sure. I just, I was saying that the commission said that, so I just want to. Yeah, it's not a new idea. Right. Don't put it in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to set the next meeting to a date soon. I think we need, we all need time. Oh. You know. <laughs> my, my question is, how detailed is this next thing that? How yeah, is it on the almost finished thing? Because at that point, then we really, we really can't recommend changes as easily. How? At what stage are we going to see well, we, again? I proposed earlier that we do what's called design development, which is the same level as required for submissions to the zoning board or the planning board. You should see what it's going to look like. Typically, what we've done for the last my 50 years are elevations going. And if the elevations look good, the building will look good. If the elevations don't look good, the building won't look good. That's one thing, takeaway I have from that exercise. But if we can get uh, our design development drawing, which shows you the windows and the, the landscaping and the, and the grading, if we can get that uh, bumped up to a photographic type rendering, I'm, I'd love to see it myself. If it were building, I do think architectural renderings mm -hmm. and then photographs of what it looks like on a building are, could be fine too. I'm not saying we have to go through the process of trying to put it on a 3D model that makes it realistic. You know, the the Peace Place one may have been right, like Bruce said, a, a Revit rendering. It wasn't as if they actually took you know real life images and made it, uh -huh. photoshopped it in. So it was that. I think it was more just it was like a nice rendering. And so I think. I do think that elevations and images can be fine and sufficient for the commission to understand what it looks like. I don't we can we show that to you and then uh, yeah. we're going to have to prepare for the planning board mm -hmm. and then we can show you that presentation and, and I expect that we will come back again. And then one more time, maybe not to the board, but we will be submitting to the town for, for a permit application and Rob Moore will look at it and say, I want to review this with this board again these particular details. At that point it'll be a set of drawings ready for bidding and we know exactly what we're proposing and happy to review them. If, if you're going to want a, a declaration on whether or not you have a certificate of appropriateness for that, my sense is what you're saying, I just want to be clear with everybody here, that at some point before you come in the last time, we have declared a certificate of appropriateness, presumably or not, but let's say that the process is under forward if we do. Um, and, and that likely would have some conditions. Mm -hmm. And so you would be coming back to us, and I think I'm speaking as much to my colleagues mm -hmm. as I am to you, coming back to us to demonstrate uh, fidelity with the conditions. So I think that's what Bill's Right. It's not like we're going to be making a declaration yeah. of appropriate on the appropriateness. No, on the spec. Um, that's right. That's right. That's right. And, and just so everybody knows, mm -hmm. I'm going to Australia for 10 weeks in uh, February, <laughs> the middle of February. I did check that uh, at 4 o'clock here, it's 8 a.m. the next day there. I'll talk to Kathy Shane because I know she checked I'm into council yeah. from Switzerland. Yeah. I don't particularly want to do that. But uh, so it would be good if this could be done by the middle of February, from my point of view, or I would probably not be involved. I mean, well, with that, thank you. With that in mind, I mean, it's really then up to the applicant, but what do you think is a good time frame to get back to um, 
Well, we have to have the drawings engineered for the planning board. We have to do the civil engineering. That has to be really ironed out. Our one foot elevation with all the stuff underneath it that makes it work before we would dare develop the, the drawings further. So I don't know what. Uh, I would guess it in a month or two, depending on Bucky's uh, schedule. Availability. I mean, can we say like January, Monday, January 6th? Is that, I mean, I, you know, I, I don't yeah. know, you know, is that? Mm -hmm. If it's all right with you guys, if you want me to work harder, we'll do it soon. So, I'm asking Ed, do you think that uh, Bucky would be? I, I think so. I mean, the holidays come up and everything, too. Yeah. But, so. I mean, well, we has a few holidays, too, so I, I mean, the 6th seems like we can get in. Yeah, yeah. Well, we shoot for that, would we, yeah. would we be able to if we find yeah. it necessary to call and reschedule? No, so the way this works is so we'll, we'll, we have to continue to a date certain, which is the 6th, and then if um, that doesn't work, we'll, you know, we'll, the chair or someone will be here to open it and then continue it to another, the next date certain. So, you know, the 6th it is, and, um, you know, so we'll just work work on that. And we'll say 4 p.m. And yeah, I'm away then. I know that. And thank you for telling us that you're I'll be here. I'm just going to see. Yeah, I think Bucky's got the, you know, most of it down already anyway. He's just got to revise what he did prior. Okay, so we are leaving. Um, I, I, I didn't check with the commission. I just threw that day out there. Right. Right. That was for, so that's our regular yes. meeting. That would be our regular that meeting. meeting. That would be our regular meeting. meeting. Right. I've got right. Um, to go um, Okay, so we just, uh, we will continue. We don't close the meeting. We will continue. At a time? After we do it at 4 p.m. Yeah, 4 p.m. Do anybody else, that, anything else that comes in? Be earlier, for earlier. Before 4? Yeah, something depending on what it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, so we will continue uh, Monday, January 6th at 4, at 4 p.m. Sure. We wish everyone happy holidays, happy yeah. new year. Thank, Thank you. Again. Yes. Uh, yeah. we'll Thank you. So this is an example of seconds. UMass. Uh, yeah, and all in favor of adjourning? Yes, thank you. And thank you, Clay.